Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We love you. We do thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. For the word of God will not return void. But I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit work in our hearts, transform our lives. I pray that the word of God be a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. Father, I pray that you build faith and hope and change in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen and amen. Now, you know, I'm excited the young people went out and had a chance to share their testimony and tell some folks about the uh, awesome redemption that's available to people who don't know Jesus. But, you know, part of the gospel, how many of you know gospel means what? It means good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. Part of the good news of Jesus is, yes, he has saved us. Yes, he has redeemed us from hell. And, uh, uh, yes, God so loved the world, he sent his only son into the world to die for the world so that whosoever believes in him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. But, you know, there's another part of the gospel. There's more to it. As good as that story is, there's more to it. And the rest is called the restoration of all things. Everyone say restoration. restoration. How many of you have ever had a project that you wanted to restore? Let me talk to you men for a minute. Men, have you ever dreamed of taking an old car and restoring it? Or an old bike and restoring it? Or maybe your garage and restoring it? Or something? Has there ever been something in your life you want restored? Um, I know that uh, there was a time in my father-in-law, uh, back when he was alive, he had this old, antique, beautiful black car that I really thought I was going to inherit. And he was always going to restore it, but never got around to it. Anybody ever seen anybody with one of those vehicles laying around? It's going to get restored, or it's going to get fixed, or it's going to get whatever one day, and one day never came. Well, they ended up, uh, the family ended up taking it and selling it to somebody else who's going to restore it one day. They have, they have. Oh, they have restored it. I really like that car. <laughs> but the good news is, and this is why I want you to hear me in our introduction here. The good news is this planet needs restoration it sure does. in a big and powerful way. You see, the thing that even believers don't understand is that the world as it is today is not the way that God created it. Amen. Let me say that again. The world as it is today is not, is not, capital N-O-T, the way that God created it. Amen. Amen. He created it before sin entered the planet. Once sin entered the picture, not only did Adam and Eve fall, but creation fell as well. And you and I need to know that there is a restoration coming to this planet. And you and I are going to be a great big part of it. Amen? Amen. And I'm excited. I'm glad that we're not going to be doing the religious thing like floating around on clouds and playing harps, looking like little babies. I don't know about you, but that's not appealing to me. Someone say amen. amen. I'm glad that the real God has a real plan for real people. And he's going to see that plan fulfilled, whether we believe it or not. That's right. So, continuing our teaching on the last days, this is the timeline of events that I've been putting together for y'all. And if you look in the, um, let me see where it is. If you look right over here, where it says Antichrist, full possession, Antichrist at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period here, We've been discussing about the seven-year period of Jacob's trouble. We call it in the Christian world the tribulation. That seven-year period of Jacob's trouble consists of two three-and-a-half-year periods. One three-and-a-half-year period, the midpoint, and then what the scripture talks about, the great tribulation. Everybody say great tribulation. Great tribulation. <laughs> A time of great trouble. Okay? Now, the Antichrist comes into power as a man of peace. We're going to look at this in the days ahead. We are going to be teaching about the Antichrist and some of the attributes that the scripture talks about him. But there's over 87 verses in the scripture just about the person of the Antichrist. 
87. Isn't that amazing? Bet you all didn't know that, did you? 87. So again, if the Holy Spirit didn't want us as believers to understand Bible prophecy or to understand the restoration of the planet that's to come, he wouldn't have placed so much about it in the Bible. Amen? People, when they don't understand it or they don't want to study something, what do they do? Who say ignore it? Thank you. That gives a gold star fist bump. <laughs> they ignore it. They ignore it. Absolutely right. And we're not going to do that. Now, one thing that I want you to understand, and we're going to, again, next week, I'm letting your appetite for next week, we're going to talk about the full possession of the Antichrist at the midpoint. Because something physical happens to him where he literally goes through this death and resurrection to mimic, to counterfeit, to imitate the death and resurrection of Jesus. How many of you know that the devil has nothing real on his agenda? He can only counterfeit that which God has already done or is doing. And he even tries to counterfeit the death and resurrection of our blessed Messiah. Now, the fascinating thing is, when Antichrist comes back to, quote-unquote, life at that point, he comes back fully possessed, fully possessed by demons. And what we're going to talk about today is from this point here on. So I don't want you to get confused, okay? Very good. Let's get into the Word. Beyond 2017, Antichrist, Part 2. And my friend Jason drew that for his book. Jason McLean, just a little plug, where he goes into the horns and the details where the Antichrist is coming from, and way more detail than, than I'm going to be giving you. Uh, I'm giving you enough of a gist of the scripture to whet your appetite and hopefully cause you to begin to study some of this out on your own as well. Now, I'm going to start here in Revelation chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Let's read it. And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. Now, a couple things I want to point out about this. Number one, I want to point out the word it. It doesn't say he. It says it. It. It's a demonic entity that has possessed the Antichrist by this time. Because the Antichrist is given this mouth, and it's fascinating because given a mouth, have you ever run across somebody who's a loud mouth? Yeah. There's a guy on, um, goodness, he used to be on television. I can't remember his name. This was back in the day. But he was known as the mouth. I mean, he was just yeah, that body always able to, to, to jabber and, and to go on to argue with people. But the Antichrist is given to mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. Now, 42 months, in case you're mathematically challenged, is how long? Three, Three and a half years. Amen? Three and a half years. The math professors verify that. Let me thank you there. <laughs> Three and a half years. Now, look at verse 6. Revelation 13, verse 6. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name, his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. So the Antichrist at the midpoint, where he goes through this death and this resurrection, some would say fake death, fake resurrection, and he comes totally and fully filled with demonic possession. And now he begins, now we begin to see the real spirit of the devil, the real spirit of Antichrist coming out, because everything that comes out of his mouth is blasphemies against God. Now, how many of you know we live in a day, and we live in a time, where it seems where people think it's okay to blaspheme God? They do it all the time, don't they? It's amazing, here in America, where we speak English, they never say, oh, Buddha, or oh, Muhammad, or oh, some other false religion. They always take the name of Messiah in vain. And that's because the devil knows that there's no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. So say amen. amen. 
In other countries, it's the same way. They're never taking and blaspheming the names of false gods. Why? Because they're already under the pawn of the devil. They only take the matchless name of Jesus. The Antichrist, one of his main attributes is blasphemy. Blasphemy against God. How many of you know that the devil has always wanted to take God's place? It says in Isaiah, he said, I will six times. And God said, you won't once. He wanted to be like the Most High God. He wanted to ascend into heaven. He wanted to sit on God's throne. And this, that, and the other. And that has never changed. Because once God created man in his image, the enemy of our soul, Satan, still wants to sit on the throne of God in our heart. Where God wants to sit, he wants to sit. You follow me? Now listen to me. He not only blasphemes against God, but blaspheming his name and his dwelling. Where does the Father dwell? Right now. It's not a trick question. Everybody say heaven. Heaven. Okay. Okay. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Y'all thought I was trying to be tricky. I wasn't. Yeah. Now, the Father dwells in heaven. Amen. Who's seated? Who is seated on the right hand of God the Father? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And who is here amongst us on this planet? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Okay, good. We're on, we're on the same track. Now, it says it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies, verse 6, against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. So not only is he blaspheming God's name, he's blaspheming heaven, and he's blaspheming those who dwell in heaven. Who dwells in heaven? Everybody say angels? Everybody say saints. I'm talking about those who are departed. Now, who else is going to be dwelling in heaven when this comes to pass? Hallelujah. Another fist bump. We are. Everybody say we are. We are. Thank you. We are. Why? Because the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are left alive shall be caught up together, so we shall ever be with the Lord in the air. Amen. Yes, I am a pre-tribulation person. If you, in your life, I'm speaking now via YouTube, so if somebody out there, you say, well, I, I'm going to go through the tribulation. Hey, you can think that all you want. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the Messiah. Amen. Amen. I'm looking for him coming for a church without spot and without blemish. Someone say amen. amen. But he is going to blaspheme the Antichrist, will blaspheme God, yeah. will blaspheme his name, yeah. will blaspheme heaven, and will <coughs> blaspheme the saints who got raptured up into heaven. Now, I don't know what lie the devil's going to come up with. I already told you a sneaking suspicion that it will have to do with aliens and UFOs and all that other mess. But somehow, the Antichrist will have to explain away the rapture of the church. Amen. Amen? And they're already preparing people as to how they're going to do that. Yep. How many of you have heard about uh, uh, this, you know, interdimensional stuff and everything else? And how many of you have heard about CERN Collider and the scientist freaked everybody out because he said, we may open a doorway to another dimension. And oh, that's all anybody needed to hear. I'm talking about unbelievers because they're like, you know, in this full conspiracy mode. The door's going to be opened and Satan's going to come through it. And listen, he's already here. He, the demons are already at work. Amen. I mean, you want to fear something, fear God. Don't fear this stuff. But blasphemy is coming, guys. All right, let's take a look. He was given them out. Everybody say, given them out? Given them out. 42 months. And how long did we say 42 months was? Three and, Three and a half years. Now again, the Antichrist will be in power for seven years. Seven years. The first three and a half years, he comes like the dove promising peace. We'll look at that next week. But from the middle of the tribulation onward, once he comes through this fake death and resurrection thing, he's possessed of the demon, and he literally goes into full rage, full, all-out war against God and against God's people, not only the ones in heaven, but the ones who become saints during that time and give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Blaspheming. 
Now, let's take a look at this. Daniel 7.25, this is out of the ESV. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 says, He shall speak words. Everyone say speak words. Speak words. Now remember, he was given a what? Given a mouth. He shall speak words against the Most High. Now, remember I shared with you guys, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation are just, it blows me away because you can't study one without studying the other. So we go back and forth. Revelation, Daniel, Daniel, Revelation. Because it's amazing. Because the same thing that was shown to Daniel was shown to John. Same events. Just in a different manner in which they wrote it down. Are you following me? The Jews are going to be reading Daniel then they, once they give their lives to Messiah in Israel during that seven year period, are going to be reading Daniel and reading Revelation as well. Are you following me? So right here, he, the Antichrist, shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Who's he talking about there? People say, well, that's why I don't believe in the rapture. How can you wear out the saints? If we... Listen to me. There are going to be entire nations swept into the kingdom during the tribulation period. People from all nations are going to be giving their lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Revelation that even the angels of the Most High God during the second three and a half year period, during the Great Tribulation, are going to be flying throughout the earth proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And it's amazing because nowhere else in the scripture do you ever see angels actually preaching the gospel, except during that second three and a half year period of the Tribulation. That privilege has always been given to who? To us. Everybody say us. Yes. To human beings. So even those who become believers during the tribulation period, the Antichrist is going to wear them out. And you see that picture right there? That's a picture of the guillotine. Everybody say guillotine. Guillotine. Right here. Okay? Not a pretty way to die. And you know what's amazing? I'll never forget that as a kid, I used to read this and I used to read the scripture talked about having their heads chopped off. I think, well, that's crazy. Nobody does that anymore. And then fast forward 40 years, and what do we have now? We've got crazy people, ISIS, who have turned it into the new art of killing people. Um, so again, this is just a precursor, the spirit of the Antichrist, already at work until finally he comes into power, or it comes into power, as the scripture says. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and the law. I think the King James Version says times and seasons. Times and the law. So the Antichrist will work to change the calendar. Okay? Now, I had somebody talking to me, and they're like, well, you know, the spirit of the Antichrist has already done that with all the sun god stuff, and how the calendar's changed for the last 18, 1700 years. And I get all that, but let me say this. Many are thinking, I don't know this to be a fact, but I'm giving you a perspective. There is a perspective out there now that the Antichrist will be of Jewish ancestry, but will be a Muslim, okay? And that he will come claiming to be both the Jewish Messiah and the Islamic Mahdi, okay? Or the Islamic Messiah. Are you following me? He's going to kind of become all things to all people so that all nations will worship him. And if he does that, he's going to want to begin to put in place what they call Sharia law. Have you ever heard of Sharia law? Sharia law is Islamic law. It's not the same law. Our laws here in America, you may not know this, were originally based on the scripture. Originally based on the scripture. And even that, of course, has changed to where that's not even true anymore, but it used to be true. And so I'm like, what kind of laws could possibly be changed that haven't been changed already? Well, I'm sure we haven't even begun to think about the laws that will be changed, but we do know he's going to put a law into place, making it illegal to serve God and to believe in the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you do, what happens to you? We know he's going to change the law to make it where no man could buy or sell, see if he had the mark, the number of the name of the Antichrist on him. That's another way to change the law. He's going to change the calendar by probably incorporating worship days. I'm thinking worship days to himself. He probably is not going to be real happy about people celebrating the birth of Jesus. So hey, 
Let's celebrate. He's going to want people to celebrate his birth. You see what I'm saying? So the whole thing is so demonic and becomes so wrapped up in him. And what blows my mind is people will follow this guy. But look at what we've had going on in this country for the last seven and a half years. Yeah. Seven years. I mean, it's amazing <clears throat> what people will follow when we have no discernment from the Holy Spirit. And I really can't fault them because, you know what, without God having done a miracle in my life, I'd probably be of the same mindset that they are. So that's why we need spiritual renewal and spiritual revival. And it says, And they shall be given, they being the saints who he's wearing out, shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. Okay? A time is a year, times is two years, half a time is a half year. So time, times, and half a time is three and a half years. Just to put that into perspective for you. Speak words, blasphemy. Isn't that what we just saw elsewhere? He was given a mouth. Amen. Now, Revelations. <clears throat> he wears out the saints. How does he do this? By outlawing worship to God. And like I said, don't think for a minute the spirit of the Antichrist is not already at work in the world. Because the Bible says he is and has been since the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. But we're talking about when all this comes to a, a, a pimple, when all this comes to a head right here. He's going to wear out the saints of God, those that give their lives to Jesus during the tribulation period, and he's going to change the calendar. He's going to change dates and times, and he's going to make the calendar all based around him. Around him. He's going to change laws from God's laws to man. And how many of you know that's already at work? Amen? Amen. But that's going to go into work in a huge way, and the Antichrist is going to be working the laws of man. Authority over the saints for three and a half years. All right. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 through 8. Also, it was allowed to make war. I love it. Again, because what word does it use again? Doesn't use he, does it? Yeah. Nobody picks this up. It's the, I'm telling you guys, the details. I love the details. Also, it. And you can look it up in the Greek, but it means it. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. Now, again, these are what I call the tribulation saints. Okay? Now, when we hear the word saints, we need to get the whole Catholic, Roman Catholic Church thing out of our brain. God sees every born-again believer in Jesus as a saint of God. Amen. That's right. Amen? So we need to get the idea of Mother Teresa and these uh, other folks out of our brains, uh, uh, though there are attributes and characteristics of these people I'm sure anybody could learn from, but who are we to be replicating? Who are we to be emul emulating? Amen? Jesus is who we're to be emulating. Amen? Now, it says they were allowed to make, it was allowed to make world of saints and to conquer them. And to conquer them. And authority was given it. Everybody say it. Yes. You, you catching the it part here? Because again, it is these demons that possess this human being. That he allowed to possess him. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all who dwell on earth will worship what? It. it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life, in the Lamb who was slain. Now I want to blow you away. This blows me away. I was talking about this in Sunday school this morning. God is so awesome. God is so incredible. Now listen to me. Your name, if you come to salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, your name was recorded in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world even came into being. Now, how is that even possible? Have you ever thought about that? Before you got saved, James, I'm going to pick on James. James, before he ever gave his life to Jesus, God, because he's God, knew that James was going to give his life to Jesus and had James's name in there, James Wydell. That should make you feel pretty good, guys. Before, look at that. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world. In the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. That blows me away. So here you've got this book with the names in it. 
in the book of life of those who are going to come to faith in Jesus. And that book was already completed before the world was even founded. Why? Because he's God. He knows the end from the life, the beginning. Now, don't get caught up in the whole <coughs> argument of, well, if, if, if God knows, then, then why do I need to go out and preach God? Listen, it didn't say that God made them get saved. He gives people a choice, doesn't he? But he knows what choice you're going to make before you make it. Why? Because he's God. Someone say amen. Amen. There is no God like our God who knows the end from the beginning. I mean, you you know, it's it's amazing. Ever since I was a kid, I, I loved science fiction. I just loved the thought of time travel and, you know, all the mind-bending and brain-bending things about it. But listen, you really want to twist your brain about something, start realizing and recognizing that God knows the end of time from the beginning of time and has seen it all. Matter of fact, you want to see yourself in the Bible? You can. You can see yourself in the Bible. How? Everywhere, like in, uh, I think it's Revelation 5, where it's talking about the glassy sea and the saints of God around the throne of God, worshiping God. You're seeing yourself in the future. That's during the tribulation period. So when he saw those saints, he saw me as one of the crowd there. Amen. Yep. That's enough to freak your brain out. <laughs> Amen? I'm telling you guys, I can't begin to explain to you, I'll try my best, of how mighty and how awesome of a God that we serve. Yes. That your name would be in his book of life before he even founded the creation of the planet. That gives me chills. Yeah. I could spend a whole 30 minutes talking about that, but I won't. Make war on the saints. How does he do that? Again, they have to have the number, the name, the mark. Are you going to talk about that in the future, Pastor? Yes, I am. I'm going to tell you some thoughts that are out there on it. How many of you know nobody has the whole gist of the exact details of this thing until it comes to pass? But the scripture gives us enough to know there is going to be a mark. They're going to worship his name, his number, or himself. And they can't buy or sell unless they have it. And if you don't have it, you're getting your head cut off. How many of you know it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward? Now, we may have differing ideas as to what the mark is, but there will be a mark. Authority is given to the Antichrist over the nations. Now, you know, people get caught up again. Is it the UN? Is it the European Union? Is it this and that? I can tell you what Scripture says. It's going to be the revised old Roman Empire. And the revised Roman Empire... You have to realize it had a Western Division and an Eastern Division. The Eastern Division is what they call, the Eastern Division included Greece, by the way, and included the nations that ISIS is calling its caliph, okay? Or calling its area of expansion there in the Middle East. And the Western leg included what's known today as the European Union. As a matter of fact, you could take the two and overlay a modern overlay a modern day map and they match up exactly. So again, there are some things already in play, already in place as to uh, what nations the Antichrist is going to have authority over. People worship it. You need to know that. The people of this world who are not believers in Jesus will go gaga and go crazy over the Antichrist. They're going to think he is the best thing since Bluebell Vanilla uh, uh, Bean Ice Cream got put back on the shelf. <laughs> Which how many of you excited about that? Yeah. <laughs> but listen to me, they're going to just go crazy and go nuts over this guy. So much so that if you don't do what he says, they'll turn you in. I don't think there's been a movie made that even comes close to depicting the horror of the reality of the reign of the Antichrist, especially during the Great Tribulation, that last three and a half year mark. Chosen from the foundation of the world. How many of you glad to be chosen? Yes. Yes. How many of you glad to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Yes. Woo! Yes. Man, if that don't make you just get up in the morning and want to praise and worship and just click your heels together three times and give glory to God, I don't know what else will. Someone say amen. Amen. Now, almost then, 2 Thessalonians 2.4, <clears throat> talking again about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and insolently against and over all, everyone say overall, over all. 
over all that is called God or that is worshipped, even to his actually taking his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he himself is God. And that's how the Amplified, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. So it's going to come to a point, and again, on this I'm wetting your appetite, because in the weeks ahead we're going to go into detail about what the Bible calls in both the book of Daniel and also Matthew 24, the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation is where the Jewish third temple, which is rebuilt by this time, and how many of you know they just completed the blueprints for the yes. thing? They went on Kickstarter, the uh, 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 Temple Institute, they raised hundred thousand dollars for the blueprints. And they got the blueprints, it's done. They have the things for the temple, it's done, they only need a place to put it. And somehow that's going to get worked out. But in the middle of this tribulation period, after the Antichrist has his death and his resurrection, uh, uh, a fake resurrection thing that he goes through where he becomes all demon possessed, now he establishes a statue of himself in the temple of God and commands the Jews to worship it. That's when the Jews realize, hey, this guy we thought our Messiah, oops, we made a mistake. Just tell you. <coughs> Jesus said, I come in my Father's name and me you don't receive. Another shall come in his own name and him you will receive. And he was speaking of the future Antichrist that Israel will think at first is their true Messiah. But then they recognize how deceived they are. And they recognize this when the dude sets up a statue of himself inside of their temple in the Holy of Holies. And to make matters worse, the statue talks. A talking statue. Now, how many of you know that there's a name for a talking statue? I'll tell. Call them robots. Robot. Some sort of robotic entity is going to be sitting in the temple of God, looking like the Antichrist, to be worshipped as God. That's why. But it's going to happen. Let's continue. He opposes God. Is the spirit of the Antichrist today opposing God? Is that spirit of the Antichrist at work in the world in opposition to the rule of God and to the law of God? Does it try to get you in your life to oppose God by not being obedient and do the things that we need to do to walk after the things of the Spirit so we'll not fulfill the deeds of the flesh? Yes. yes. Amen. So the Spirit's already at work, but this Antichrist, it will oppose God. It will exalt itself above God. Isn't that what he told uh, Eve, the yeah. serpent? He said, eat of this and ye shall be as what? Gods. Sits in the temple of God. To, 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 they're talking about now that they think they can take somebody's head off of them and put it on somebody else's body or download their consciousness into a computer. I mean, any way and every way they can imagine, except God's way, trying to provide for themselves eternal life. How many of you know it's doomed to failure? Yeah. Yes. It is doomed to failure. You want eternal life? Believe in Jesus. Yes. With all your heart, surrender your life to him. Amen? Amen. Sits in the temple of God. Daniel 11, 36 and 37. We've got one more scripture after this and we're done. So hang in there. Daniel 11, 36 and 37. And the king shall do according to his will. Let's talk about the Antichrist. And he shall exalt and magnify himself above what? Every, Every God. And shall speak marvelous things against who? The God of gods. Remember we read out of Revelation. He was given a what? Given a mouth to blaspheme. Isn't that cool how you can go Revelation, Daniel, Daniel, Revelation, back and forth, back and forth, talking about the same entity also, 2 Thessalonians. And shall speak marvelous things, that's the blasphemy against the God of gods, and shall prosper until the fury is fulfilled, for that which is decreed shall be done. What fury is fulfilled? Remember the scripture talks about how Satan will be cast out of heaven to this earth with great what? Fury, for he knows that his time is short. You see, 
we, we, we don't realize that Satan still has access to the throne of God. How do we know that? Because the scripture says that he does what before the throne of God? Accuses the brethren before God day and night. Are you following? And he also roams the earth seeking whom he may devour. But he accuses you before God day and night. And who sits on the right hand of God the Father praying on your behalf day and night? Jesus interceding. But there's a time coming when the devil will have no more entrance to accuse the brethren before God. That's exciting. Amen? Amen. And he will be cast into the earth with great fury. Everybody say fury. fury. It's a good English word for it. With great fury because he knows that his time is short. They'll only at that time have three and a half years. He will not, then it goes on and says, things against the God of gods and shall prosper until the fury is fulfilled for that which is decreed shall be done. Verse 37. He will not regard the God of his fathers. Now, there's a lot of reasons that many Bible scholars believe, myself included, that uh, the Antichrist will be of Jewish ancestry. You may not know this, but how many of you uh, realize Hitler was of Jewish ancestry? Yes. yes. True. Very true. Okay. A type of Antichrist. Um, he will be of Jewish ancestry. Some speculate and say they believe he will be from the tribe of Dan. Now, there's several reasons for that. One being uh, a, a prophecy that was given over Dan in the Old Testament. And another reason is over in the New Testament in Revelation, when God seals 12,000 Jews, Israeli Jews from every tribe, virgin young men from every tribe of Israel, one tribe's missing. And that's the tribe of Dan. So, verse 37, he will not regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. Now, I looked this up in the Hebrew because different translations translated this different ways. And the best I could tell is he will have no physical desire for a woman. Now, whether that means he's single or is a homosexual, I have no idea. But either way, it wouldn't surprise me. But he has no natural affection for women. Which it's interesting that it says that. Many have speculated, many Bible scholars, because of this verse, that he will also be a homosexual. Okay? Nor regard any God, for he shall magnify who? Himself. Himself above all. You know, there was a speech that was given by our dear president, um, and I don't get into politics too much, but this makes a point, so I will by our dear president some time ago, and it was recorded that in this speech he talked about himself over a hundred times, wow. made reference to himself. And I was thinking, well, what a picture of the future Antichrist. Because the future Antichrist, it will be all about him all the time. Amen? Amen. All the time. All about him. You going to make it this guy? <laughs> all right. <laughs> All about him all the time. Listen, have you ever met somebody like that? Where you talk to them and you can't get a word in because they're just so busy telling you about how great they are. Listen, when I talk to folks, I don't mind hearing about people, but I want to hear what Jesus is doing in people's lives. Amen? I want to hear about how great he is. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Tell me how great God is in you and what great things he's doing in you. That's awesome. But the Antichrist, he's all about himself all the time. So I told you guys, I preached this Friday night. False teachers appeal to self. False teachers appeal to you being all about you. Just go look at the magazine racks at the grocery store. What are some of the names of those magazines? All you. All you. What's another one? Self. 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 I mean... Guys, I'm telling you, this is a picture of where we live. And that's the spirit of Antichrist. Except the Antichrist, he's all about himself. He's not going to care about anybody else. And if you don't worship him, it's thought to be of Jewish descent from the tribe of Dan, will have no desire for the opposite sex, and shall magnify himself. Self-worship. 
Okay, last scripture. Here we go, Daniel chapter 11, verse 38 through verse 39. This is wild. This is where you're, you're, you're either going to throw something at the preacher or think I've lost my mind. But let's look at these last two verses, then we're going to quit. Verse 38 of Daniel 11. But instead he will honor the God of strongholds. The God of strongholds. Now what God is that? With gold, silver, precious stones, and other costly things, he will honor a God unknown to who? To his ancestors. Now verse 39, this is where it gets into freakiness. It goes back to what we preached on, what I taught on, back as it was in the days of Noah. And you can catch up on these on podcasts on our hopeforlife.org website. But it says he will deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign god. He will confer honor on those he acknowledges, causing them to rule over many and distributing land as a reward. Now, he will deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign god. He will honor the god of forces. Listen, and I've shared this before, that I am seeing a correlation between man's hunger for an alien savior and a coming antichrist. I am seeing a correlation between the UFO phenomenon and where the Antichrist somehow is able to deal with the strongest defenses of other nations with the help of a foreign god. What foreign god could he possibly be referencing that could physically help him with the defenses of other nations? And then I think back to the things I've read about um, strange lights appearing over missile sites and where the missiles, uh, all the lights go out and the missiles don't function. And I mean, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of reports. Um, do I believe in green little alien men? No. Do I believe in demonic entities that impersonate that they've come from Alpha Ceti or some other light system to come over here and mutilate cows and do all the other weird experiments? I believe that there are demonic demonic entities at work on this planet, setting this planet up for a great lie and a strong delusion in the days to come. And somehow, somehow this will tie in with assisting the Antichrist, this foreign god, in dealing with the strongest defenses, the strongest fortresses. How many of you think, you know, we think the United States, our, our, our defenses are like second to none. I mean, we've got all this technology and everything else. How in the world could the Antichrist ever accomplish half of what he wants to do unless he had help in somehow incapacitating the defenses, the fortresses of these nations? And here it says that help will come from a foreign god. Will that foreign god come in the uh, skies, its globes and orbs and all this other weird stuff? Some think yes. And we think that as uh, the book of Daniel says, that this book is sealed up until the last days where people really want to understand what's happening or what's going on until you live closer to those days, then it's unsealed. And we think that there's that unsealing process that's been going on where people are realizing more and more of the deception that's out there and that is the Antichrist, the devil, is setting the world up for a great lie. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are not going to fall for his stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet. Did you learn something this morning? Yes. Yeah.